Alex Shaw Davis, Olympic champion, world champion. I think you're the first um, Olympic and world champion, multiple world champion I- I've had on the podcast. You well? How have things been with you for the last few weeks? Uh, busy. Um, <laughs> I mean, surprising. Uh, to be honest, getting back into the swing of things uh, and uh, kind of resetting my targets on Tokyo next year. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I, my body's kind of adjusting to training again because I had a couple of weeks off. Um, but yeah, things are good. I feel good. I'm healthy and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah, how frustrating was it then? Like, you know, it's been a few months now and everybody's probably accepted the world is a different place now uh, to what it was. But, you know, 2020, you've been gearing up for it for four years. Then literally you're going to yeah. run to before and it's just taken away. To be honest, like the last few few years, it's, it's felt like there's been a major chance every single year. Um, it feels like as soon as you conquer one thing, it's like, right, we need to reset and go again. And that was the case. We had the world champs in Dubai in November, which was, you know, crazily late. Um, and then we, uh, we, were ha- we had to get back, have oh, two weeks off. Um, and then it was like a seven month turnaround to uh, Tokyo. Um, so it was... Not nice, not having a long build-up, you know, constantly feeling tired, constantly feel like you haven't had a run-up to a major game because you're going from one to another every year. But um, when March lockdowns were announced, um, yeah, I was, yeah, I, I was worried because, you know, all of a sudden Tokyo was still happening, but I had nowhere to train. <laughs> yeah, well, talk about, about your training then because we recorded a quiz show for S4C, didn't we, not too long ago. And I think it was at the time we were sort of still in the lockdown or post lockdown. Yeah, yeah, and you talk yeah. about a gym and a, a throwing um, place you, you built back home. Yeah, well, I think I think when when everything was announced that it was you know everything was closing, all the gyms, all the facilities. You know, I did, I'm not going to lie, I panicked because I was like, how am I supposed to train? Not only for an event that comes on once every four years, but you know, I'm going in as a favourite to defend my gold medal. Um, how am I going to trade for this in my back garden? <laughs> Basically, that was that was the problem we had. Um, so quickly resourced everything I can. Um, I have my own throwing circle. Um, luckily, I moved into a new house back um, in December last year. So just before everything kind of hit the fan, let's say. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I got two big apple trees in my garden. I tied a cargo net between them, reinforced it with some steel, um, and it, you know it takes it takes a good impact of the shot. So I set my shot for surf up in front of that, and I've been doing drills. I mean, it's not it's not ideal, but it was better than nothing, and it, and it was enough to help me tick over and not get too rusty, thinking that we were going to come out in lockdown just before summer or something. Um, obviously, that wasn't the case. Um, and then, of course, I, I built a lifting platform um, at the bottom of the garden uh, where I just put down about eight inches of stable matting and a bit of solid flooring to lift off. And, you know, I've got enough weight to, so uh, depending on the weather, you know, <laughs> luckily the lockdown happened, you know, as we went into summer. So that we, we, we came off the back of something crazy, like six months rain. Um, and then we had some, like a mini summer, let's say, I think it was a good six, seven days of sun in there somewhere, but um, it was drier and I was able to tra- train outdoors. Um, but, you know, when, when, Tokyo was announced it was postponed I was kind of relieved um didn't have that pressure uh I knew that I wasn't able to prepare to the best that I wanted to um you know like everyone does so um you know, it was a, it was a blessing in disguise because um I could focus on uh, the more important things that were going on at, the, at that time like of course making sure that we stay healthy and that all our family and friends are doing the same thing but watching watching the family grow up as well which has been quite nice yeah, that's the thing. You're a father now. It was two years your daughter ago? She's, she's one. She's one. one. Sorry. One. So, wow. <laughs> Can I say you, you, you're sleeping she's then? Well, yeah, I'm losing I'm, I'm, I'm track of time because I was watching your interview after the World Champs, and yeah, yeah so she, she was really a young baby, and you, I, it kind of tickled yeah, me. You added one. Now I'm thinking you're saying I'm buying a Christmas tree when I'm getting home. <laughs> literally i came home like she was six weeks like it was it was it was that that time people don't even realize what was going on i moved out of my home uh, a week before i flew to the world champ so i had to you know move my family out put everything in storage a house that was not ready that needed to be renovated but it wasn't even ready to start renovation yet so we were in no man's land i went off to went off to dubai i thought well 
you know, I'm gonna have to take everyone with me because we've got nowhere to live. <laughs> you know, we're gonna be up. So, um, you know, they came out supporting me, and then we came home and uh, we kind of sofa surfed for three weeks whilst uh, I renovated the house. Um, you know, that obviously <laughs> that, that kind of stuff wouldn't happen now. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, those kind of things people don't even realise that was going on. You know, it caused a lot of stress, and uh, you know, I was happy just to come away. Uh, with a medal, let alone a gold, and be able to hold Phoebe on the podium, which was, you know, one thing I added to my list that I wanted to do before I retire, and I managed to do it quite early on, <laughs> within six weeks of her being born. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's stress off, I'm taking a box. So I, know, I, 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 <laughs> I assume you're in the home you're renovating now, so obviously you could have done a half decent job. Yeah, 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 so um, I kind of went absolute blitz on the house uh with, with with family and friends and i managed to get it done and moved in day before christmas eve so uh it worked out all right in the end all right. but uh yeah crazy times <laughs> you, you you handy with your hands as in you know, what, what work did you do then or was it i i assume it's oh, just the, the carrier I, 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 may i i i kind of just took a sledgehammer and anything that didn't want to be kind of standing there put in <laughs> no i did that i did everything i've done everything in the house um i've done all the flooring um done the kitchen we've done bathrooms bedrooms you know done it all and luckily you know my dad's um knows his way around with electrics so he's been kind of showing me what to do um as, as i go along but it's, it's been awesome i've learned so much to be honest <laughs> I, I feel have... like i built this house <laughs> <laughs> the thing is i don't move before the olympics <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't Oh, mate, I'm never moving ever again after that, you know. It got to a point where I pulled up four layers of flooring and then found parquet underneath, and I was like, this is getting ridiculous. It's been so, you know, so much work. So I won't be doing that in a year. Fair enough, fair enough. Hey, because we talk about training, okay? Um, I put a tweet out earlier before we did this to try and get maybe a few people to, to throw some questions over. Um, first question's come off Di Green. Are you good, mate? <laughs> Good mates with Dai, obviously a former, former Wales runner. Um, <laughs> he was asking, how big is your chest? And obviously that's going to gear with your bench press, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> how big is my chest? <laughs> well, in, in chest, chest so as in chest size, size yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chest size, that's that. Um, right now, I think it's, a, it's not very impressive right now. I think I'm around about 47, 48 inches, but... Um, <laughs> but at, only at, 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 at my best, at my sorry, my best, at my biggest, my chest. I've, I've, I'll put it this way: I couldn't fit into a fifty-eight-inch chest jacket, so it was. Uh, I was definitely on the larger scale. But right now, I'm only one hundred nine kilos in body weight. Which, when my chest was at its biggest, I was about one hundred forty kilos in body weight. So you know, you're talking about a six stone difference there. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, my, my yeah, my chest isn't that big anymore. Four, Forty-eight, fifty, but um, you know, I do. I've, I've done a two hundred kilo for, uh, bench for two, so I, I you know, it's, it's, it's obviously suffice. <laughs> <laughs> what is that now? You mentioned two hundred k now. Well, I, the most I've done as of well this year was about four weeks ago, where I did one ninety five for two. So yeah, we're okay. getting up. We're, we're moving well, up. I think that's the thing. Kind of, you could maybe touched on it earlier that you know, kind of disability sports. It's come such a long way to kind of probably when you started, what, 10 years oh, ago yeah. and more, that, you know, you, you know, the weights you're lifting kind of are massive. It's, it's the... Apparently sport, it just moved on. Oh, apparently sport's kind of been... Well, 2012 catapulted it 20 years forward. And since then, it's kind of just been in people's eye line. So there's been massive talent IDs, at the end of the day, there was a massive crop that came through at London, me being one of them. Um, and there was such a, there was no one ahead of me. There was no one that was going to fill my, my boots when I go. So, you know, it's all great when you've got these guys dominating for years. Um, but now we're seeing so many come through. Um, so many young talent, especially here in Wales. We're getting loads of good throwers. So, you know, it's nice, it's nice to think that we've been a part of some sort of legacy. Um, I know I, I'm probably sounding like I, I'm a lot old, but older, but I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm still. I'm still in the mix of these guys, and you know, it's it's nice to see, you know, fresh talent coming through. But it's getting harder as well. You know, it's before I could probably do two, three. I remember I did three thrown events at a junior world champs back in 2006. That would never happen now. <laughs> and I, yeah. I would, you know, I'd be lucky to qualify for one. So um, the sports evolves. It's 
people, the athletes are evolving. When I, when I first came in the sport, people had never seen anyone like me before. They were questioning my disability. They wanted to know about it. They'd never seen anything like it. They were, they were learning about my functionality, functionality. And we've seen over the years how athletes have evolved and now how I've gone from being one of the most advantaged in my class to being the most disadvantaged. You know, just because these, you know, these different breeds, different um, technologies getting better. And, and you know, it, the, the sport's kind of gone to the next level. So for me, you know, I, you know, I made a decision about six years ago that when I, when I came second in the Commonwealth Games, I didn't ever want to be in that position again. So I needed to make sure that I left no stone unturned and that I was the best version of myself made the switch to change everything in my team to be as good as able-bodied. I wanted to be competitive, able-bodied standards because I knew if I was at that standard, even on my worst days in the para, nobody would come near me. But now it's got to a stage where you have to be able-bodied competitive just to be competitive for medals in the para side. So it's, it's, it's wonderful to be a part of that legacy, but yeah, we've just got to keep pushing. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've competed in the able-bodied, was it last year in the British Champs? Or the yeah, Champs? yeah, so uh, British Indoor Champs. Well, I've, I've, I've competed at the um, Olympic Trials, British Indoor and Outdoor Champs for the past three years. But last year was my the first time where I wanted to compete competitive. Um, you know, I had this obsession where I was like, I want to see how good I could do able-bodied, you know, you're just coming off the back of smashing a huge world record in London, winning my shot put event by over a meter and a half. You know, that was the absolute perfect scenario where a plan came together and everything was, was perfect on the night. So it was kind of like, where do we go from here? You know, I, want, I was like, well, I want this to be regular. So there was a lot of trial and error. And I suppose that's where people have kind of questioned my form over the last two years because We've, we, we've tried and errored a lot of technical things, you know, in the ring and out of the ring well, with my leg as well. And I'd say if we tried 10 things, nine of them went wrong. So, <laughs> that, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're heading down roads that nobody's been, or I suppose I'm creating because I'm the world record holder. No one's thrown the shot with my disability in my category as far as I have. Um, you know, I'm one of the f- best, uh, furthest apparently throws of all time. And, you know, what we're trying to do, there is no data. So we're creating that data almost uh, for the next gen. So, yeah, you know, it's been tough because sometimes I just feel like I'm hammering and chiseling away and I feel like I'm going further backwards than I am forwards. So it's been a tough couple of years, you know, just trying to get to the bottom of, right, how do I make sure that I'm this good all the time? Um, Yeah, we're finally coming back to it. You know, it's, it's been a an exploration of different things the last two years. So, um, you know, we have to do that. Though. We have to make sure that I was doing everything I could, that there was nothing we were missing out on, that there were certain methods, techniques that weren't going to bring something to the table that we hadn't seen before. Um, and now that we've trialed all of those, we know what works. Yeah, because um, next year, cause, well, the World Champs just been were, were tough. You said you were you were lucky to win gold there. Yeah. So, you know, what's the feel like these days when you're looking forward to Tokyo and the competitors? You know, how tough it is it going to be out there? I think um, I think Dubai was a missed opportunity for my two rivals. You know, the, the, well, any of the guys in my event that night in Dubai, I was there for the taking. I really was. Um, I shouldn't have won. I wasn't the best man. Um, I was just at a place where if I threw horrendous, it was still going to be competitive. And um, that absolute resilience and, you know, not wanting to lose kind of made sure that I uh, did the job. But it'd be a different cutlet of fish yeah. next year. Yeah, you know, going forward now, we, you know, we know, we know what we needed to do to throw far back in London. Um, you know, we just have to make sure that we, we tried all the doors that were there for us. So I think Tokyo is going to be different. It's going to be hard, a lot harder for these competitors, for, for my competitors, because yeah, they're going to, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be becoming a different athlete than I was in the world champs last year, um, be thrown a lot, lot further as well. So um, yeah, I think they're going to be expecting to take me down, but it's not going to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting talk style already, like it, yeah, I like it. <laughs> I've got up for being nice, to be honest. Like, it's going to be for years. I've been so nice to these guys. And every time I win, they're like, oh, I'm going to get you next time. So it's like, all right, 
let's do it. Like, you, it you said you're going to beat me for years. Let's go. So, you know, it's just getting to that age now. We get into those times where it's only so, so long you can, you can, you know, I have an ultimate respect for everyone I compete against. But um, when people are literally waiting for you to lose, it's like, nah. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, not going to happen. Hey, you, you were saying kind of, you're still a young man, um, but feels kind of for, for all of me who are following your career, been around for a long time. So kind of from yeah. that kind of 10, probably more 14, 15 year period almost now, what kind of stands out for you? Because obviously London was your first real success. Does that still yeah. stand out to you as you kind of the highlight of your career from what you've achieved so far? <laughs> well, I think, I think there's, a, there's probably a couple of points. Um, obviously, I started after Athens, 2004. 2006, I took my first junior world title in Dublin. That was in 2006. So, you know, I think that's when I started to realise that I could be good at it. 2012, well, 2011, getting selected for a senior team made me realise the dream of not just making 2012 wasn't, you know, it wasn't just a dream. I could actually go there and, who knows, do some damage. After I won my medal in the world, it was like, yeah, I can definitely go to London and do some damage. London happened, changed my, changed my life. Um, but I wanted to be recognised as an elite athlete. Um, I, I wanted people not to think about my disability, not about, you know, not about para sport. I just wanted to see someone to see me as a thrower. Um, and I knew that was only going to come with, you know, pushing the standard, pushing the record. But, you know, it's all in para sport. It's all good winning. But um, the key in para sport is to keep winning. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. And you've got to stay up there. And it's the hardest. It's the hardest thing. And it's the loneliest place in the world at the top. It really is. Um, do you still get the same, obviously London, for everyone, if I've lasted in my memory, as, as an event, the, the Olympics, do you still get the same media attention now as you did, kind of, as the British athletes did back then? Is it kind of still, is it on a par, or how does it compare? I think uh, what London 2012 did was amazing. Like, it did catapult power and big sports so far forward, but it's still so so far away from where it should be um and that's even just to be on the par with able body we're nowhere near nowhere near that the you know we had we were, there was a t- accumulation of things in 2012 that summer the olympic fever the fact that the whole country embraced it um it was marketed and pr'd so well the paralympics it really was um just by even when i touched down in london i remember billboards everywhere saying you know, thanks for the warm-up about the Olympics, even though the Paralympics, you know, about the Paralympics coming into, I was like, this, this is so bold. This is crazy. But it worked. Um, and I just thought, wow, what an opportunity this is. You know, what a wave is created. Unfortunately, everyone's just ridden that wave. You know, they haven't thought, right, there's a platform to build on. Um, you know, they just, 2012 was what it, what it was. Um, I still get recognised now for that even though I've won a lot of things since then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we forget yeah. about the kind of what we've achieved so far. Kind of you know, just every, 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 the amount of people go, oh, yeah, went past your goals post-box yesterday. Or, <laughs> and I forgot you, about them. <laughs> I know, and you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, even <laughs> I do. Do you know what I mean? It's, you see, it, was, it was an absolutely incredible time. Um, yeah. I think just because of the perceptions as well. I remember one of my favourite things was seeing children uh, in shorts in the Olympic Park, even though they had prosthetics and stuff, and they were running around. And I just think, I didn't even wear any of that. You know, I didn't wear a pair of shorts until I was like 16. Do you know what I mean? I, I was always afraid. I always wanted to hide my leg and whatnot. So it, it was, you know, it, it was the, so many accumulating factors that made that summer so special. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, Paramount Sport has got a long way to go. Um, I feel like there's a handful of people keeping their foot in the door, like myself. Um, I honestly don't know where we go from here, if I'm honest. It's, it, it, for me personally, all I can keep doing is what I'm doing, keep raising awareness, keep showing, you know, I know we've got four or five great throwers here in Wales, and that's just in Wales alone, that we will see winning Paralympic medals in the next four to eight years. You know what I mean? And that, that, that's exciting. That is exciting. So, um I suppose that's I'll just keep doing what I do and if I can if I can keep raising awareness inspiring and who knows who knows we'll see <laughs> um, another question <laughs> Jake Quickenden a good friend of yours has got in touch 
<laughs> I thought I'd better ask a question. I don't know why he wants to ask this question to you. But do you fancy Jake Quickenden? <laughs> That's his question. <laughs> do I fancy Jake Quickenden? Oh, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? What a handsome chap. No, great guy. Great guy. Um, Jay, I, I, uh, I've done a lot of uh, charity work and whatnot with Jake. And, um, you know, he's, he's, he'll, he's, he's been able to be incredible in journeys. And, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I'll leave that for you for him to tell you you know about his family his brother and and all the journey and he's been on it's incredible but <coughs> there's not many people that understand disability he's just one of them that is a uh, good guy and um yeah i think it, it's very rare that you, you 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 get to meet people with similar personalities when you're doing events and stuff so uh yeah very uh, i think that's a friendship not many people would have seen coming you know someone who uh well, did well on the X Factor. I think he won nine the celeb as well. Yeah, was he? Did he do um, uh, Dancing on Ice as well? Yeah, he did that as well. And he's <laughs> yeah. he done them all to me. Yeah, you basically, you basically can be calling out all the, t- all, all the shows. You know, whoever pays, he's doing it. <laughs> oh, he's all over it. But yeah, he, he, you know, he's a very talented singer as well. So um, yeah, good guy though. Good, uh-huh, good stuff. <laughs> um, you were saying earlier, sorry, something I didn't pick up on. Being, being number one, being on top. It's a lonely place. Um, obviously, kind of last few years, you've spoken about mental health and openly and, and stuff. Um, how are you at the moment? Kind of, how, how, are you all good? And, and you still kind of active in promoting mental health? Yeah. I'm, do you know what? There's, there's, I think when, when I came off the back of 2016 in Rio, uh, knowing how much I'd done between 2012 and Rio, I think I was just expecting my life to maybe change, maybe get a bit easier. You know, you, yeah. you start winning a lot of accolades and you, you see other people in your position who won a lot of accolades and you think, oh, maybe that's the direction I'm heading in. But, you know, it's not always the case. Um, and for me, I've, you know, I've learned a lot of harsh lessons. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I've spoken, I sp- you know, when I first spoke about mental health, it was on accident. It really was. You know, I, I accidentally came out and said, you know, yeah, I've been feeling, you know, low. And, and it's something that, that I'm addressing, but I, at the same time, you know, I was a bit weary because I know there's a bad stigma around it. So, you know, when I, I when it came out, I just thought, screw it, because I don't really care uh, what people think about me. Um, I knew I knew that I was dealing with my own demons, and you know, I put them to bed about two two years ago now so yeah it was you know it, it's it's not like you flick of a switch it, it's kind of when you address your problems um and you might ma- and you learn a way to manage it you know you can put a plan together and move forward and i was lucky that um i had a you know a great group of people around me uh brought me back down to where i needed to be um and i kind of just almost humbled myself in in just making sure that all my energy is going into training and being the best i can be um, and not having these expectations that things are going to happen because it's just not the way it never has. I've never had anything. Um, I've always gone out and worked hard for it. So I don't know why uh, I was expecting things to just come to me. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I've, I, I, it's, it's great, you know, in a weird kind of way, it's great to see so many people talking about mental health. Obviously in an ideal world, no one wants to be suffering from it, but um, you know, if I could, you know, if, if, if me coming out as, as helped anyone else kind of speak about what they're going through, then, uh, you know, that's great. But um, for me, it, you know, it's, it's a door that I kind of shut two years ago, but of course I'm, I'm, I'm always open to talking about it. I'm always, you know, I'm always lending an ear, um, a text, you know, anything to my friends and support because, you know, I, I don't, I don't ever think, yeah, I've been there. I've got a t-shirt. I'd like to think, you know, knowing people that I've spoke with and, and scenarios that I've heard of and, and other people's battles, I've had a taster. Um, and that with, with what I've learned, you know, I, I, you know, if, if I can help friends and family out or, or anyone really, um, I know, I know um, Lloyd Ashley's doing some great stuff down at the Ospreys and, you know, been chatting a lot to him and, and helped him out a bit as well. So, you know, it's great to see a lot of people in sport now talking about it, especially on the men's side. Very testosterone, masculine, yeah. big men. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter what sport you are. There's a lot of ego there. So no one wants to come out and say, yeah, it's been tough. Do you know what I mean? Um, but that is the harsh reality. And 
I think as long as you can address it, you can work on the plan and um, make sure that those people around you are the right people. Um, talk a bit about your and chef uh, and, and tough. Um, your nickname. I'm only thinking your nickname's the bear. Yeah. Yeah. Who gave you that? I, you I know thought... why? Okay. So this, this started in, in New Zealand, my first world champs. All right. Um, in 2011, just to, I think, yeah, I was 18. And basically I, I went into the call room for my final and you had the top seven, including me, eight guys in the world the, these guys, I was younger by 20 odd years. Uh, these guys were monsters. I was absolutely cacking myself, let's say. I was very scared. Um, and I remember just sat there and um, the, world, the world record holder at the time, um, a guy that I, I used to have a lot of respect for, looked up to until he failed the drug test. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mr. Lombard, South Africa, he, um, I remember him telling me, and he goes, see this little pup here? He said, he's the future, you know, the pup, beware the pup. And I was like, who are you calling a puppy? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm an obvious. So, yeah, it was quite, it was quite funny when, uh, you know, I, I just thought, I'm going to reinvent that. I'm going to, I'm going to take that. Uh, and it was at a time where, you know, I was getting all, getting all hairy, getting bigger. You know, I felt like I was putting on a stone a month between uh, uh, 2011 and 2012. So when it came to 2012, I, I would just embraced and I, I just thought, no, nah, I'm not the puff anymore. I'm the bear now. <laughs> yeah, I'm the bear. <laughs> oh, so you're the self-called bear. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and you know what? It's actually come out a couple of times. I know Ewan Thomas has mentioned it in Comrie saying, oh, he, you know, the, he was a big grizzly bear. Or he's a bit like, and I just thought, hey, do you know what? if the shoe fits, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. It's a good nickname. It's a good nickname. <laughs> um, look, you know, you say kind of you're always kind of aiming high. You've you've achieved so much. As I said four world champs, two Olympic golds. Is it? Yeah. Um, how many Europeans? I, I don't know. You got you got too many golds. So I, you're going good. Yeah, I, I think. think. John, I, I, I was working this out the other day. I'm pretty sure it's seven world championships and nine Europeans, as in medals. Yeah, yeah. Gold. Um, but yeah, kind of. But what what's next? As in kind of you know, obviously we compete in Tokyo. We're pursuing Birmingham as well, Commonwealth. After that, um, kind of, you know, how long are you going to comp- compete for? And is there, is there, what are your targets? <laughs> um, I, I, do you know, I on if I'm honest, and this is literally, I have not spoken about this for many people. Like, I was contemplating, I would say, a year or two ago, calling Tokyo the the finish line, um, and a lot of people were like, "You're mad." <laughs> you are mad and, and they're right I have a dream job I love what I do um, I can't imagine waking up and doing anything else at the moment but at the same time I don't feel like I'm getting worse I feel like I'm getting better and I'm still learning um, yeah it's getting a little harder but so is everything else <laughs> it's just that's always, always going to happen with time but for me of course Tokyo is the plan uh, Paris is definitely a plan 2024 and uh, LA 2028 is definitely a plan. So um, <laughs> you mean every, every, everything between now and LA 2028, I will be throwing everything up. Um, as long as I'm fit and healthy, I plan on being the best I can be on each and one of those start lines, uh, whether representing Great Britain or Cumbria, of course. <laughs> yeah. If, hey, interestingly, kind of, I only read a bit, um, I think this morning, I used to, you were a bit of a swimmer, or did swim a bit, kind of back in the younger days. <laughs> swimmer? Yeah. <laughs> Submarine, mate. <laughs> yeah, what would you do if, if you weren't an athlete? What would you do? What would you be career, career be? <laughs> Definitely not bloody swimming. <laughs> uh, do you know what? Um, that's a good question. I really don't know. Yeah, there were so many things I wanted to do when I was younger. When I was 16, I wanted to join the army, but I couldn't oh, because of my leg. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There was loads of things that I wanted to do, couldn't do. I remember working um, hospitality. You know, I've worked behind many bars. But in terms of a career, I don't know. I love sport. My whole family was sport. You know, I went to university and I did sports management. Um, I honestly don't know. Yeah. I well, put, a, to... put a sledgehammer in your hand and you've got a career, I think. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I... I I'd like 
I w- one day I want to give back. I really do. Um, I'd love to coach. I really would. Um, when that day comes, I'm sure opportunities will hopefully arise. But um, at the moment, I'm, I'm just embracing being the athlete again. I feel like I've got a second wind. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be doing this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, Al, thank you for your time. Um, hopefully, you're going to have another chat in a few months down the line or a year down the line, you've got another gold medal around your neck and uh, we can celebrate a bit more. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Maybe, uh, maybe with a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. I'll do a chavau around them, sir. Do a chavau, boy.